Let's check out a simulation that shows how the Ackerman steering model works. So the first thing I'm going to do is run a launch file here, ROS launch AZ car sim, AZ car skidpan.launch. So this launches our empty car. It just sits around and does nothing. Uh, if you run a if you haven't run any of the other tutorial videos, you may not have known that if you just start a launch file, uh, you don't automatically see the visualization engine pop up. So let's go ahead and now run GZ client so that we can see the gazebo client, which will show us what's actually being rendered behind the scenes. So here's our car. Again, it's not really doing anything interesting. It's not in an interesting place. Uh, but what I want to show here is what's happening with the individual uh, elements of the vehicle. So I'm going to give ourselves a top-down view here, maybe. If I can sort of... Oh, this is basically top-down. I don't know why I'm having trouble aligning this exactly like I think it needs to be aligned, but I am. So you can see here that I have the car. The car's not doing much, it's just hanging out. Uh, I now want to plug in my joystick so that I can make the tires move without having a controller specifically do something. So I'm plugging in the joystick. Uh, it may ask you what you'd like to connect it to uh, if you're running a virtual machine, so then say connect to Linux. And now I'm going to ROS launch AZ car sim joystick.launch. So this is going to connect uh, through the joystick to command velocity Python node a joystick node. If you want to look at the launch file for this, you can find out some more information. So now I should be able to turn the tires using the joysticks. I'm going to try to turn them right and then left. You can see that the, car, the tires are turning. Uh, they turn based on some internal controller that I've specified using Gazebo. Uh, but what I want to show you is how these tires line up as we're, uh, as we're doing the turn. So I've turned on the centers of mass, uh, sorry, the center of mass information, which has all the inertial parameters. So because we haven't moved, everything's all lined up. So let me scoot the car forward just a little bit. You can see that we have center of mass information for the tires, and we also have center of mass information for the vehicle itself. So these will stop to line up after a while because the tires will start to slip and they'll end up at a slightly different orientation. So you can see already here in the back tires that they don't quite line up anymore exactly with each other. That's just some of the slipping that's normal in the gazebo simulation uh, based on how things work behind the scenes in there. So it's not a perfect simulator, but it's good enough to talk about what we want to show here. So now let me look again from the top of the vehicle, show you what's going on here. So we have some lines that go through the tires that show us the orientation of those tires. And so the rear tires, you can see this green line here, run left and right. Likewise, we have a green line here that runs left and right for these tires. So let me turn the tires again to the right. And I want to show you now what it looks like if you were to draw a line through each of the front tires. So if I can get, I've never tried to do this before. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Maybe it's not. Yeah, here we are. So now we're like inside the car. And if I let go of it, you'll see that the tire will turn back. And so the, the line that points out of the car here is pointing to our center of turn. So if I scroll out a little bit here and we look through the tire, you can see that this green line is pointing directly through this tire and it's going exactly where the tire thinks that our radius of curvature would be. So if I like scan through the tire here, you can see that that line lines up here with where we see the rear tires. So if I scroll out here, you can see that the rear tires have an axis that points through them, and the front tires also have an axis that points through them. So because we're using Ackerman steering here, the line that points through this tire, if I can make this run again, so the line that points through this rear tire, to the, through this front tire, and the line that points through the other front tire, line up over here exactly, or pretty close to exactly, where the line from the rear tire comes. And so here's... If I were to move these just barely, you'll see that the tires will give up. So they're not always lining up because I haven't done a hardware version of the um, of the rack and pinion to, conf to constrain the tires to always be lining up for the radius of curvature. 
But whenever we settle on a steady state value for the radius of curvature, then that radius of curvature will end up with the front tire to the right, in this case, the front tire from the left, and then the rear tires will all converge at the same point. So this gives us a uniform turning radius for all of the tires. So now if I were to try to drive straight, I won't have as much slipping as if I didn't have uh, the Ackerman steering model in place. So you can see, by the way, that again, if you keep your eye sort of on this point here, that as the car drives around, all of the lines uh, converge at essentially the same point. So whenever they don't, uh, this is an indication that one of the tires may have slipped. So whenever you're doing a rigid body kinematic simulator like Gazebo's or rigid body simulator, uh, it has a bunch of constraints on how all of the pieces need to align with one another. And when those pieces don't line up, then it applies some force to do that correction. So that force manifests itself in Gazebo by being uh, by, by having some uh, slipping that occurs and then you'll see the car bounce or one of the tires will sort of move around. Uh, if you set your joint values incorrectly here, so if your joints don't have a lot of mass or if perhaps the inertial properties are off, then you'll see that you'll have a lot of these kind of events where it's trying to converge on a solution that doesn't violate any of your constraints. But it's nice to see here that uh, we're getting this kind of convergence. So what happens when we don't have this kind of convergence? And by the way, you can see that when I, when I do this, they don't always line up. So because they're each using a controller uh, that's defined uh, for that joint, that when I set a new set point, that it follows the goal of that controller. And so while the wheels are turning, we actually don't line up on the correct uh, axis point. So this is something we may correct in future simulations, but at this point, uh, it's good enough that once we've set on you know, an exact point that we'd like to have, that the tires basically converge on whatever the radius of curvature would be. So you can see as I sort of increment this value that we have an alignment taking place of all the points. So, so I'm going to stop this simulation and show you what happens if I turn off Ackerman steering. So I'm going to do that by editing the code here. I had a little debug message here that I don't need anymore. So my, my steering controller is broken down into two parts. So one part is if my steering angle is non-zero, then I do this stuff. Otherwise, if my steering angle is zero, everything is easy. We just send the exact value. So I'm going to actually create a temp variable here that I'm going to set equal to false. And then I'm going to say if temp instead of this. So I'm basically forcing it to always use the, the same controller that I would use if I was driving straight. And we'll restart back up these various uh, simulation engines here. And also restart the joystick. So now in Gazebo, if I zoom in on our car here, I'm going to turn back on the joints so that we can see what the joints are doing. So view, center of mass, and inertia. So we have exactly the same thing. Let me uh, sort of scoot the car out of the way here so we don't have uh, the main mass block that belongs to the, to the skid pan here. So here's our basic axis of motion. Uh, now I'm going to use the joystick again, and I'm going to turn the tires. So now you can see... The problem with this controller, if we were to use it, is that this front, the front left half, front left tire of the car converges here, and the front right tire converges there. So now if we try to drive, we'll see a lot more skipping, uh, and the tires are going to start to slip a lot more. So you can see that the tires are starting to get uh, a little bit unhappy with what's going on, and now the car is starting to rock around some. So that rocking that you see in the car comes from the fact that these two tires don't line up, but we're trying to make the car turn on a common uh, radius. And so, so this is basically making our simulator very unhappy. And whenever you see something like this happening in uh, a rigid body simulator, this is telling you essentially, that, oh, that's why it's not working. Uh, this is telling you that, the, that we have lots of constraints that are being violated. So again, if I tried to, if I look at this from the side. So now if I try to drive straight, everything is happy. And then as soon as I turn a little bit, 
everything sort of locks down. So if I turn to just a really small angle, I should see that everything's kind of okay. And now you can see the tires are like bouncing around the, the vehicle simulator is sort of not sure what to do because the tires want to stick to the ground, but they also want to turn. And so uh, whenever you have a situation like this where you have a constraint that tells you the tire shouldn't slip, but you also have a constraint that tells you that the tire should turn, and those tires are held together by some rod, uh, then this kind of violation of constraints uh, results in your, your system not knowing how to behave, and so you lose a lot of simulation time trying to resolve these constraints. So this is why you might consider using for a rigid body simulator uh, an Ackerman model if you want to get realistic values of the, the vehicle's mass, if you want realistic values of the fact that you might want to have slipping in the tires or not have slipping in the tires, etc.